we finally have the plumbing ready to be inspected. Morning guys, welcome back to the off-grid cabin build vlog here on our homestead in Idaho. Jules is drilling away. What's up, bud? Will you help me with this? Yeah, no problem. Right now, Seth and I are working on drilling holes for the electrical wires to go in this room. And after I'm doing all the full bays, then Seth is going to go ahead and cut all the insulation for in here. And um, what we're going to do, we decided to run the wires down um, through the bottom of the cells instead of over the top. So that's what we're working on. We're drilling all the holes now. We'll run the wire later. Um, electricity is not a super big priority for us. Um, we just don't use a lot and we can run extension cords if we need to. But getting in here and getting warm and heated is a bigger priority. So we're getting the insulation up and just pre-drilling the holes because you could just run the wire right behind. We know where all the holes are going to be, so you could just push that back, run the wire, push that back, run the wire, right? It'll just take a little bit longer to run it, but it doesn't really matter if you're running it in a 80 degree wood heated house. I'm working on the plumbing, bringing the plumbing down into here. We'll have a manifold right in here. And so we're running a manifold system, not a trunk and branch system. We've got two cold lines going up here and then coming around over here, coming down this way to the bathroom, right? Vanity. And I think we'll just branch off of the vanity um, cold to go over to the toilet if that's legal. If not, we'll have to run another line over for the toilet. I think it shouldn't be a problem, but we'll find out when the inspector inspects it, or maybe you guys will tell me, hey, you can't do that. Half inch line can only go to one fixture. Could be the case. Then the shower coming down here, over to here. Now we'll run the hot over to the bathroom, get the bathroom kind of done. And later today, we'll go to Home Depot and get all of the termination points that we need for all of that. Then we just have the kitchen to run. We'll run it over here. And I'm gonna run it through the exterior wall a little bit. I think we're gonna end up coming down right through here probably, or maybe coming down through here and coming through here, down like that over to the kitchen sink. So I know a lot of you guys said, you know, don't run the, don't run it in the exterior walls, but I've talked to some people up here and it doesn't seem to be a real problem. So we'll see. If it is a problem, we'll move it. Got the hot and cold coming down to here for the bathroom running along up here like this and then down to here it is time to start hooking up the pecs we made a home depot run you know and like framing walls and all that seems like it's really cheap when you compare it to all the little things you need for plumbing but check out what we got here we got this uh copper stub out here this is actually going to be for the toilet and so for you guys that don't know about pecs, which are a lot of you probably in Indonesia, let's just look at it here. Then we got this plastic piping and it's gonna fit over this nipple here. We've got a ring that we're gonna put on here first. So we force this little ring on there. And then we're going to push this on to here, hopefully. We're gonna try to anyway. Yeah, like that. Okay, we got that on there. We got our ring on there. Then we take this special clamper and we put it over it. Get it in the center and we clamp it. And it's on there. Should be totally 100% secure now. Leak free, perfect. So we'll do that to all of the all of the ones, let's look right here what we got. We've got cold and hot here, and we're going to branch off of this cold line right here with this brass T. We use the same rings and all of that. And so we'll cut it here, cut it here, it'll go into here, cold will run down to the sink or over to the toilet, whichever place it needs to go to. And then oh, the I'm hot getting though, attacked. <laughs> Stop attacking me. I can't film. <laughs> okay, Tex, that's enough. Tex. Tex, 
You're being a bad example. <laughs> Some crazy dog. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'll show you that when it's done. But um, you might want to check out what Sarah and Seth are doing. All right, let's go into this bedroom. And Seth has it almost completely insulated, except for a few of the smaller pieces that need to be cut down to size. And then Sarah is over here Hi. working. What are you working on? I'm working on drilling holes into the studs for the electrical wires and stuff like that. Yeah, so basically what I was doing earlier, mm -hmm. Sarah is taking over that with, we got a new drill. Yeah, it's working pretty good. Ryobi, can okay. you hold it up? Oh. Tux, no, no, no. There's a link in the description to all the tools we use. So so we have had really good success with Ryobi. So we went ahead and got another Ryobi that comes with another battery. So that's what yeah. she's using right now. And then also over here in the laundry room, there is even more insulation. So Seth's doing a good job with that. And it's all coming along really nicely. Good job, guys. Thanks. So I'm taking it out right now. And I just cut this piece to go in this small spot. Cool. Yeah. Show us how you do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> just like <laughs> Sweep out all the sawdust. Yeah, and cobwebs make and it, stuff. Make it clean. Yeah. So you put this in here. I do the top first. And I work my way bottom, pushing it in, and then stuff it down. And make sure it's nice and even. Pretty much. And good job. It's good. Nice. Yeah. Some go really easy, and some are like you struggle with them. <laughs> like this one, like you have to like stuff it in there before you can actually do it. It's really, <laughs> yeah, I don't like quarters. A little narrower. Yeah. Well, it looks good. Thanks. Continuing on from yesterday's video, guys. It's a chilly day here on the homestead. Check it out, man. It's snowing today. So pretty. It's not a whole lot coming down here. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? A little bit of snow. Hey, our water tank's almost full too. Probably about 1,500 gallons in there right now. We got the tub pulled away from the wall and we got it all insulated behind it. We've got our vent run right here. It comes down into the wall cavity and then pops out down there. It'll go out the rim joist. If it's gonna be cold, it might as well snow, right? Yeah. What do you think? Cold without snow is not fun, but with snow, it's way fun. It's beautiful. The Love Loft is doing really good. We had 80 degrees up there yesterday, last night. 80 degrees. I'll show you the heaters we're using. I'll put a link down in the description below as well. They work awesomely good. We're using these little guys right here. Propane, non-vented, totally safe to use indoors. We connect it to a five gallon bottle right here. We don't use them all night. We just use them, you know, when we're here hanging out in the evening. And then in the morning when we first wake up, we go ahead and use them again, but we don't run them all night. Man, look at that. Oh, it's so cool. Hey, it's snowing in the house. What? Had we seed that and put the window in by now, it wouldn't have been snowing in the house, but it'll just be a little bit. We had a special request from Quality of Life Homesteading Channel. They're building a cabin a lot like ours. And he was asking how we're going to plumb in our tub with PEX. Well, we got this kit right here. Unfortunately, a lot of the pieces are already out of it. But let me just show you right here. So you get we got our valve right here. And then this kit comes with these different PEX adapters that go to it, right? And so right here is the one that goes out the bottom right here. You connect the piece of PEX, then it'll go through right here. Um, we'll put a piece of block across here and it'll go through there. This top piece is actually this one right here. And we'll put a block going across here as well. And then that will hold the shower head up there. So basically you got PEX connecting this down to here. Um, hot and cold coming in. I forget which one's which, but hot and cold coming in. And then PEX coming down to one that looks just like this thing. And it will go right here, connecting those two together. 
screwed to a block of wood. It was a little nerve wracking drilling these holes here, guys. Let me show you. When he drilled, when we drilled these, we didn't have a fine tooth hole saw, so we just used the hole saw backwards. In other words, we ran it in reverse. We ran it forward to get the pilot bit to go through. And then once the pilot bit went through, we put it in reverse and then drilled the hole in reverse to make sure that it drilled a nice smooth hole. Wow, that's noisy. A nice smooth hole. That's how we're putting in the shower. Jules is over here taking down some bracing. Is it cold, Jules? It's really cold. Let me show you how the snow went. Whew. Man. It looks like this. Snow wasn't really even on the forecast today, but let's go see how cold it is right now. Because it feels like it's really cold. But I don't know. I could be wrong. It just feels like it. Oh, yeah. About 28 degrees there. Tuxer, how you like the snow, huh? It's like, ooh, the snow. I like it. This cup right here is fully frozen this morning. My boots were frozen to the floor this morning. You didn't know that, did you, Joes? <laughs> yes. I pulled my boot up off of the floor and you know, like the snow that was stuck to the bottom had melted. Mm -hmm. And then overnight it froze to the floor. Oh, that's so crazy. There's a cabin in my boots. Really? Yeah. Not complaining, just saying. You guys are interested in this kind of stuff. So we're sharing it with you. But we're still working on this. This is probably the slowest tub install ever. But it's also my first tub install ever. So uh, we're getting it, guys. It's coming along. I'll show you when we make some more progress. Just had lunch, guys. Chili beans, Fritos, cheese, and onions. On our kitchen right here, set up in the love loft. The love loft is now the kitchen loft too. But one of the cool things about being a YouTuber is sometimes companies just send you stuff. Yeah, I got a box. Wow, a home grow box. Yeah. Huh. You were right, Jules. Wow, a home grow box. Huh. Maybe it's for starting seeds in the springtime. Pretty cool, I guess. Oh, there's a note in here. It says, Green Joy Indoor Herb Garden Starter Kit, Hydroponic Grow System, Plant Germinate Kit, DIY and Kitchen Grow. Cool. We got all of our water lines running here into this manifold. Show you this manifold here. Just take off this little cover. Looks like that. It is plastic. It looks like it's PVC. And these things right here, they just screw on and screw off. All right, so for each PEX line then, see you have a valve that uh, screws onto here. I am less than impressed with this thing. It seems kind of cheap, although it was nowhere near cheap. It was like almost $150 for this manifold system here. I think you could make one a lot better, but this is what they had available when I needed it, so this is what we got. We'll see how it holds up. We finally have the plumbing ready to be inspected, guys. I kind of want to walk you through our plumbing and have you guys tell me what you think needs to be improved for the inspector, okay? We'll start at the tank. We've got our blue tracer wire, right? If you saw our other plumbing inspection, we got our green sticker to go ahead and bury everything. But now we're going for the rough end plumbing inspection. Got about 1800 gallons of water in there. It connects to here. We have not opened that valve yet, but it goes to here, it goes down this way and then goes into the crawl space. So we'll follow it. Hey, Joe's Morgan. Hi. She's off on a mission. So let's, let's just follow it through. It's a natural path, okay? Uh, come inside here. We're gonna need a light probably. It's stuck down there. All right, so we come up underneath the footer and we have a ball valve that comes up here. We still have our blue tracer wire coming up into the house. Comes up here, T's right here. Right in this area right here is where we're gonna cut in and put our water pump, 12 volt RV water pump. But from there, we T here 
Uh, this tees off to the hot water. This will go up to a hot water loop right there. Too high? I don't know. Figure, it's easier to lower it than it is to raise it. So we got the hot water loop right there. Hot water comes back down to here into the hot water side of the manifold, which then goes off to all of the fixtures. Same here from the T, goes to hot water, goes to cold water, comes up, branches off to all the cold water fixtures. All right, so at this point right here, all right, take a look at what we got. Anything wrong with it? So we'll follow this line right here. It'll come around over to here to our um, laundry box here, vent going down. Um, any problems here? All right, come up with the vent, come across, just go over, support it here. Um, comes across and gets tied into the three inch main vent. Goes up into the attic. Let's go over to the bathroom. This is the vanity right here. Tee off of the cold for the toilet. Six inches um, away and six inches up on that. These guys right here are, what are they? I forget now, 24 inches off the floor and eight inches apart. Tub shower combo here. I'll show you what we got over here. So right here, right, we've got just the PEX fittings on there going up. All right, maybe there's something wrong with that. I don't know. You guys tell me, okay? You guys are a professional plumbers because I'm just an amateur. All right, let's see here. We got this coming in, teed into the three inch stack. Goes up, comes over, goes up. Follows the roof line up and then we'll cut a hole in the roof. Poke it up to the top towards the ridge to help prevent snow from ripping it out or damaging it or causing a leak. Here's the kitchen, All right? So we come in over there. Kitchen pipes come down whew, right to here. I think these guys are 18 inches off of the floor. That's 16 inches off of the floor. They are further apart though. They're 16 inches apart. And so, oh, plating, right? Nail nail plates. I know that. I got those. We're going to put those in today. Um, nail plates need to go across there, across there. They need to go across there. Anywhere where we have less than one inch of wood in between the pipe and the exterior of the wood. So let me give you an example. Like right here, right? This is more than one inch, so we don't need a plate here. That's to prevent um, a drywall nail or drywall screw coming in and puncturing the water line. Let me know if there's any problems, all right? You wanna see what else is going on in our homestead? There's a video right over here that you'd probably like to go ahead and check out. Otherwise, hope you guys have a really great day. Keep smiling, and I'll see you right over there in that video in just a second. <music>